let me hand this out and we'll start in. Today, um, we're, we're really going to open up three different things, three topics. Um, the first is phrase model stuff, which some of you may know about. The, the second <coughs> will be how voice leading, individual voices, sometimes account for events like suspension or retardation. In other words, it's the counterpoint sometimes that gives rise to some really wonderful, expressive events. And it's not always harmony. In each of these cases, I hope you'll see that there's a complementary relationship between melodic kinds of things and harmonic kinds of events. They work hand in glove. They work together. Uh, and third, we're going to talk about uh, compound melody, which is melody that ends up implying harmony. So again, melody and harmony working together. Let me write those up on the board so you can see where we're headed. Okay, so melody and harmony interacting with one another. Number one, harmonic function. Number two, counterpoint. And then three, compound melody. Okay, so first I want to talk about harmonic function. Function is a, a role that you play within some context. If you are a football player, you're in the game of football, and you might be a quarterback. And your role is to put your hands where you really don't want to, but you do it anyway. And then you get the ball, and you throw it or hand it off and do other things. You're, you have a defined role in the team. Uh, and now, you could have to, if you're in a small school, you might have to play a position for the defense as well, right? So um, tackle, you know. So, wait, what's a what's a really? Mm, what would you play center. if you had to play? What's that? My son plays defensive center. So. Defensive center. Okay, you got to be big though, and I'm just not there. <laughs> so anyway, pick a pick a position on on the defense, and you might have to play a little of each, right? If you're at a small school, so a person can potentially play a position on the on offense and on the defense. Can move around and do different jobs. Same thing here, chords can do different jobs, and so we need a, a word for this. The jobs that chords do, and that's what we mean by harmonic function. Its function is, we have to say tonic, or its function is dominant. There are all these functions that chords can play. Uh, that's what we mean. If you've ever been to, uh, to the Playhouse, you're going to see a production of Macbeth, maybe. Um, tomorrow tomorrow creeps in this petty base from day to day. You know, all these lines that, that come out. All our yesterdays avoided fools away to dusty death. You know, all these great lines. But, okay, that's Macbeth. How many people have played that role? A lot, right? You, know, you might play it multiple times, but surely, you know, you come back next year, it's probably somebody new doing it. It's a role that you play, but different people can step up and play that role. So in music, we've got these roles like tonic and predominant and dominant and tonic. So what, what's a dominant functioning chord? Two. Not two. Five. Sorry. Five. Five will work. There you go. Okay, what makes five do what it does? First of all, what does five do? Yes, it goes somewhere. It leads to tonic. What are, what are some other words we use? that show that it needs to go somewhere. Am I a tendency? Yes, it has a tendency. Generally, five goes to one. That can go other places, too. If you're in a deceptive cadence, where will it go? The five ha has to resolve. That's true. You're referring to this resolution, huh? Good. This is the, the engine that moves five to other chords could be this, but if it's a deceptive motion, you can put a six in the, in the, under that category as well. A six chord can do the job of absorbing the energy of the dominant, but it's also not quite right either. It's not as stable as the one, and so when we land on a six, we go, okay, there's more to come. Can you imagine ending a concert with five to six and then walking out? Everybody would be like, <laughs> should we be clapping? Now, you know, just, it would be really weird. So uh, we don't do that. We end on one at the end. But there can be all these fates, you know, going this way and that, instead of landing on that one that you expect. 
So it can do a tonic job, the six can. Um, but great point. We've got a lean tone, it goes to one, and that chord member, the seven being a part of the five chord, that's what makes this five need to go to the tonic. Do um, you see what's going on here? We're talking about harmony. All of a sudden, we're talking about melody. We're saying that there's a note in some melody within this chord, and it needs to move in a particular way, and the chord then goes with it in some way. That's interesting. They're working together. What else can do a dominant function? In other words, what else can lead to a time? Or seven. Seven. Good. Both of these have that leading tone. So that is an important feature. And I mean the leading tone seven and not the lower one. I mean the one that's a half step away from tonic. Seven's a little ambiguous, but leading tone tells you exactly what, I, what I'm looking for here. So in minor, that's why we're always having to add a sharp or a natural or something that raises to scale degree seven, because we want a leading tone. It drives that five to the one. Okay, so a couple chords that can play this role. We've talked about this. We could do the same thing here. We can start listing some tonic, opening tonics. So we've got an opening tonic and a closing tonic. Order matters. Dominance leads somewhere. They go somewhere in time. So there's this ordering going on here. We've used words like lead to and resolve to. And all that just shows that there's there's a momentum to this. It goes somewhere in time. There's a tendency. That was a good word too. Once you hear a certain chord, you, ex you expect certain things, and that's what we mean by tendency. We think, hey, it's probably going to go here. So yeah, there's order involved in this, and that's why we end up using all these terms. So when we're talking about roles, we're not saying where you line up on the, on, uh, along the scrimmage line. We're talking about music, and so it's order and time is what we mean. And your function is your position within that context. The context is a phrase. Uh, a chord progression, and we're trying to explain how a chord progression works. What do we mean by progression? What does it mean to progress? So now we have an idea of what progression is. It's to move through these chords in this way. And we also have an idea of what regression would be, to go backwards through it. Retrogression is the word we use for that. Retrogression would be going this way, backwards a five to something in this category. Let's fill in that category. What are some chords that tend to lead to the dominant? Two, good. Four. four. Two and four, great. Both are good. I'm using major, I'm using chords whose qualities make them fit into a major mode context, not a minor mode context here. But we could equally well put two diminished and four, minor four in there, and that would work too. So it doesn't matter what mode we're dealing with, what kind of key, it's going to work. So you can plug in various things. Um, you can plug in a three there, too. A lot of times we think about these as primary chords. Um, in other words, the prototypical chord that represents that function. And then we think of others as substitutes for it. Like five to one is really the one that we know best. And we say, well, you know, the seven, it does something kind of like it. It does something kind of like the five. It's a substitute for it. Here we've got two substitutes. We've got a primary chord, the one, and then we've got these two other chords that can substitute in for it. So one is the prototypical tonic, and then these other guys can sort of substitute in for them, right? Like second stringers. <laughs> They're usually warming the bench, but they come off and play once in a while, you know, that kind of thing. All right, so um, what's kind of interesting about some of these, like, take the six. I should show you this in a, on the overhead projector here. Here's a color wheel. Can you tell me why these colors are arrayed around this circle the way they are there? Because the primary colors are red, blue, blue. Red, blue, and yellow, yeah. good. And you see how they're big and bold? Yeah. Okay, so how do you get purple? Can you explain that, Sarah? You mix them, right? And then, and then like, blue you and mix red what? together, blue and red together, like your primaries, and you get like a 
secondary yeah. color, right. It's a derivative. You take blue yeah. and red, you mix them, you yeah. get purple. Now, on the color wheel, again, I'm just doing major keys here. I'm not doing minor, but it works there, too. You could just substitute in a minor one, a major set, all that. Okay, so it's going to work there, too, but this is just to illustrate. Um, we had six and we had three listed under tonic. Do you see why that is? They live right next door to the one. But let's understand this first. Do you see the primary chords here? One, five, and four. four. Yeah, one, four, five. Um, here we had one, two, three, four, five, six things. But in a scale, you've got seven steps. So if you've got three primaries, you're going to have somewhere where you can fit two instead of one thing in between. See what's going on there? That's important for these two. We'll come back to those two secondary chords in a minute. But why is six in between one and four? Because of the common tones in it. Good. Can you tell me about common tones it shares with the one? The one and three. Good. Scale degrees one and three and then are in both of those. Okay, and then go ahead. You're going to say? The six and the one. Yeah, six and one. So <laughs> if you wanted to list this out to make it utterly clear, which I think I better do. Okay, here's my one. The content would be one, three, and five. Those three scale degrees. And over here, we're going to have our, our four. And I guess I'll write them out this direction. Four, six, one. That's the content for it. And then we've got this six over here, and it has six, one, and three in it. So, oh, okay, I see. There's a one here, there's a three here, there's a six there, and there, and a one there, and there. We've got two common tones either direction. And that means that six is kind of like an amalgam, a combination of sum of one and sum of four mixed together. It's, it's a secondary derivative sound, at least if we take this idea of one and four being primary chords, okay? So, three is similar on this side. It's got two notes in common with the five and two notes in common with the one, and so it exists right here. Now, what does that really mean for us in the end? It helps us picture why certain chords can do similar functions. Why can three and six do similar jobs as one and serve as a tonic chord? Why can they substitute for the one? Well, they're similar to the one. They share two common tones with it. So you could put a circle around these or whatever, amoeba, do amoeba around them, <laughs> and show that these guys, a peanut, that's what, that would be nice, a peanut right here, around those guys and say those can all be tonic. Similarly, we could come over here and say, I need a predominant chord. Well, I could use a two, but I could also use a six. These are predominant chords. But over here's my five. A three could substitute for it, especially if it's like this. If I have three, six, then, you know, it's in the face. I'll put my five in the base, and that's going to tip the balance toward making us hear that as kind of like a five chord. And I'll have the leading tone, but I'll put skill degree three somewhere up here. And you might even be tempted to say, well, you know, I have another label for that. What's another label? If I want to call that a five chord, I can, but what will I need to do? Even with a seventh, I could put it in. Right? Sounds like a dominant. Mm -hmm. It said five add six, isn't it? You just added a six to it. Or, if you like, a thirteenth chord. And then you'll get the scale degree three, two. So it's really, in that case, very obvious why the three, six can be dominant, because we get to hear that very sound. But only when it's a three, six, right? And not just when it's by itself. Isn't it? Yeah, when it's in a root position, it tends to be other two. And we're used to hearing this and hearing it as tonic for a while. In other words, we can think of that three as a substitute for a one six. One chord in inversion. So it's a stand-in for a one six chord, and, and now it sounds very different to us. So I have the same scale degree content, but if I go... Imagine dragon, by the 
See, if I did that, then you go, oh, yeah, I hear that. That's just one. And then what well, could have just been one to six, but I'm going to change the color a little bit. And in that context, I'm going to hear it as more tonic and not a change to the dominant. Especially because in that progression, we're going to a four right after it. So it would be really weird to try and make that a dominant, wouldn't it? In front of a four? Mm, that doesn't make grammatical sense in, in the common practice period, anyway. So we go with tonic in that case. All that to say, three exists between these two, and based on the context, we can go either direction with it. It can be more dominant like or more tonic like, depending on the context. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're exploring harmonic function. Jobs that chords do, and there we go. And we're realizing that we're realizing that chords do have roles that they play within their context, and context matters a lot. What are the flanking chords? What what kind of situation is it in? That's important. We're also realizing that melodic content has a lot to do with the sense of resolution. That said, it needs to move. And these, and also this one, they all have scale degree six in there, so that becomes an important element within the predominant chords, especially in minor, where it's a half step away from scale degree five. Some people call that the descending leading tone. Just a half step up from the leading tone to one. But in minor, six is a half step away from its resolution, five. And that gives some power to this need to, to move predominant to dominant, when especially this goes to five. Okay, so there is a relationship here, melody and harmony, in interaction, helping to create this effect that we hear. Chords needing to move to other chords. Um, let me just mention another thing. Dan Harrison has a book about harmonic function, and he really goes back and, and surveys a whole bunch of people like Riemann and, and Hauptmann and all these people from uh, German theorists. Um, very interesting writings, and he kind of surveys the whole thing and, and shows the way they thought in the 18, 1800s and generates a new approach using harmonic function. And one of his points is that it really depends where these scale degrees exist. If the seven, the leading tone, is the root, it has quite an effect on the chord. If it's the chordal third, he calls it an agent, it's in a position within the chord that helps determine what the whole chord will do. When it's the fifth of the chord, so now make this the chordal fifth. It has less to say about what that chord's going to do. So what's the chord if scale degree seven is the chordal fifth? The fifth of the chord. Make it the root, and you have a seven chord. You make it the third of the chord, and you have a five. Make it the Fifth of the chord, and what do you have? Three, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Now, the seven has less effect on what that chord will do. Make it the seventh of the chord, and what do you have now? One. Okay, so here's a one seven chord, and now we have a tonic <laughs> with a scale degree seven. This, the scale degree seven, the leading tone, has less effect now than it does for any of these others, right? When it's down here at the bottom of the chord, a quarter, a root, it amplifies its effect. If it's higher up in the chord, it mutes its effect. So position within the chord has an influence there too and qualifies the effect of the melody that's involved. Interesting. 